So welcome everybody to the Tactics Board. My name is Natalie Pike and I am your co-host of this new podcast. I'm very excited. Um, I'm joined as well on this podcast by the wonderful Carl. Hello, Carl. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. I'm Carl. I'm the co-host of this. Um, and me and Natalie will be talking you through fantasy football, everything related to fantasy football, tips, hints and techniques to get you through the season. Now, we better get the important stuff out of the way straight away. Do it. Let's do who it. Do you, who do you support in real life? In real life, um, I'm from Salford. I was born in Salford, so I support United. But I don't know how well that's going to go down with you. Manchester United. Manchester United, yeah. The one and only. Okay, okay we're going to have some problems. I, know, I can see it straight away. It's going to be fun. I <laughs> am a lifelong Manchester City fan. Yeah, so, um, I heard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, life lifelong before you start saying it. That's always the comment. No, that's made. fine. No, I've come with plenty of ammunition anyway, and I'm sure you have. So I'm ready for it. I love it. I'm <laughs> ready for it. I'll, I'll take that. Um, have you? What's your fantasy football history, Carl? Um, definitely checkered. It's fair to say. Um, fantasy football and me, we have a love and hate relationship. Whereas I love it and it hates me <laughs> in the sense that. I, take, I took last season off because I take fantasy football so seriously that if I miss a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, it's your season down the drain, isn't it? So um, I'm ready, I'm recharged. I'm not going to miss a season at all. I'm not going to miss a weekend at all this year. Really? So, I'm looking for top four at least. Top four? One, two, three, four? <laughs> out, of, out of just our league? <laughs> out of just our league of the four people, I want to get top four. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was thinking if I got like top 100,000, I'd be happy. Oh, my so, word. <laughs> I know. I haven't done fantasy football. Well, I was trying to work it out the other day. It's either five or six years because right. I'm the same as you. I get fully obsessed. Like, I'm already putting a note out there to, to you all. If it, if it looks like it's starting to get a bit much for me, somebody's going to have to step in and hold like some sort of intervention because <laughs> like I am one of those people that start, like, you know, like I've already signed up to one of those websites that gives you like super geeky stats. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah like I, I get so into it. Like I think I'm Pep Guardiola and it just starts getting a little bit much. So about five years ago, I said, you've got, you've got to step back. You've got to take a break. But I'm hoping I'm a bit more mature and I'll be able to sort of <laughs> handle handle the pressure um, and, and not quit. Well, I'm very, very excited to do this with you this season. Um, and we will be here to talk all things fantasy football with bargain buys and squad analysis and, of course, the best tactics to build your team for each game week. We're also really proud to say that we've partnered with Sky Sports Fantasy Football and that we have a brand new 2021-22 football shirt up for grabs for whoever tops our Fussy Accumulators League this week. Now, get in, join our league. You're definitely going to be better than me and Carl by the sound <laughs> of it. So <laughs> the code to join is on your screen now. It is 9976717. One seven. So you can see it there, nine nine seven six seven one seven. Now there is going to be loads of chances for you to win prizes throughout the season as well, and obviously you can pit yourselves against us. So what's your um, what's your team name, Carl? My team name is A B C D E F C because do you get it? See exactly. That's what fantasy football names are supposed to be <laughs> dreadful. Whereas people looking be like. I actually don't get it. It doesn't even make any sense. I don't get it. What is it? It's just like A, B, C. It's the alphabet, but with F, C at the end, if that makes sense. A, B, C, D, E. F, C. Okay. That's slow of me. What's that yours, was... Ali? So mine, I'm just putting mine straight out there. No United players. That's the name of my team. Oh, wow. wow. You see, I think that's, that's your first mistake because... Yeah, I'm aware. Yep. You've got to move rivalries to the side. I've done it Can't with do it. Liverpool, I've done it with City. You'll see if my team a bit later on, but honestly, that's where you'll go wrong, Natalie. Don't care, I'm not having Bruno Fernandes. I don't care how many points he scores. I'm not. So have you, so don't, we'll show everybody later of our teams, yeah. but have you got City players in your team? I've got City and Liverpool players in my team. No! See, I'm, I've got no United players and I just, I cannot put my bitterness to the side on this. I just can't do it. No, that's fine. That's fine. Honestly, I think as a whole, I think United fans are just more mature and fine with it all. So I think um, you've I'll got good players. You've got good players. You've got good managers. You could have had Messi. You could have had better players. But 
you went with Jack Grealish, so that's fine. Um, imagine if we had Messi and we was putting Messi in our fantasy football team. How much would he cost? Oh, my word. We wouldn't be able to afford him, would we? I love the fact that a United fan's trying to make me feel bad because we signed Jack Grealish, not Messi. <laughs> like, oh it's, no. It's jealousy, me. honestly. No, but I, was, <laughs> I did want to ask you, Natalie, is that bittersweet? In all seriousness, is it bittersweet? Because how the deal's worked out, and it sounds like a strange thing to say, is it bittersweet signing Jack Grealish? Because he's an incredible player, of course he is. But obviously, you signed Jack Grealish, that means you've missed out on Messi. You can't have them both. How do you Why feel? Not? You could have, we could have had them both. Why do you say we missed out like that? I think it, it seems to be that 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 you know when it would, you know the Barcelona thing happened, that PSG were the only team in for him. It it appears that City didn't go in for him. Now City will have their reasons for that. I would love to have had a City shirt with Messi on the back. I would love to have been able to watch him every week. It's not happened. Am I going to sit and feel sorry for myself that we signed Jack Grealish? Am I hell? The guy is in. Incredible. I cannot wait to see what he does this season. So you're trying to fish me there, Carl. I got you. I see you. I'm trying. I'm trying. I've gone early. I just you wanted know. to see Messi at Stoke away. That's all I wanted. I wanted to see did. if he could actually do it on a windy night at Tuesday. Windy Tuesday at Stoke. Oh, my word. And he could well, do it. I hope you, I hope you draw them in the, the Champions League at some point. Although you're in pot, you're in pot two and they're in pot two, aren't you? Because neither of you won the league. So. Yeah, that's very true. That is very true. Right, let's go back to fantasy football. I feel like we can sit here and try and have digs at each other all day. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a quick look at the popular picks. So the most popular players in the game at the start. So um, heading into the new season, these are the ones that have made most people's squad. And we're just going to quickly go through them and have a a little chat. So do you want to start there with the the keeper, Carl? Yeah, of course. So let's start off with Emi Martinez, um, Aston Villa goalkeeper. Um, He's... £7.2 million in fantasy football. He's been selected by 20.56% of players. And I just think if you look at his his starting 11s, how many times did he start? 38 times. He started pretty much every game last season for Aston Villa. So he's such good value for money. And he's had a big, big summer. He's just won the Copa America with Messi um, and Argentina. So coming off the back of that, I think he's a good buy. What do you think, Natalie? Yeah, he's he's definitely in my team. He was the highest scoring, uh, second highest scoring keeper last. Oh no, highest scoring keeper. He's got nine. He scored nine more than Edison last year, um, but he's the fifth most expensive. Which I just, I just think he's a steal, really. So, um, yeah, he's definitely in my team. I'm I'm surprised that he hasn't been selected by by more, even though he's still the most selected. Yeah, I think I think he's just. I think people maybe look at Aston Villa and think, oh, their defence is shaky. They might concede a lot of goals, but equally, he's going to be busy. Um, He he had a great season last season. When he was at Arsenal, he showed really good promise. And like I said, he's had a great summer. He'll be just carrying that form into the start of the season. Right, and then moving into our defence, or the most selected defenders. This is where it gets exciting for me, I think. Well, this is where you start getting that Liverpool players to, to see if you if you have selected them. So the first one there is Trent Alexander Arnold, of course, the Liverpool player. Um, mm-hmm. Started thirty four games for them last year, ten clean sheets, two goals. But this is where it gets interesting for him. Obviously, he had the eight assists and the four man of the match uh, performances. The second most expensive defender at ten point five million, but the fourth highest scoring defender. So he is he is. A, he's, he's, a, he's a good, solid choice. And obviously, do you think the fact that he's had um, the summer off helps him? I think it does. I think he is someone that everyone needs in their team, especially because he's a defender, but he's practically a midfielder, especially with his stats. Last season, he had a bit of an off-season. Uh, so did most of the Liverpool team, to be honest. But he kind of brought it back near the end of the season and he got back in the England squad. He then had that dreadful injury, which ruled him out of it. But like you say... He's had the summer off to sort himself out. And I think the type of player he is, the type of person he is, he'll want to prove to everyone that last season was just a blip and he'll get straight back on it. And you look at those stats, even though they're good, the season before was even better. So I think he's going to be even better than last season. So he's going to get improved on the eight assists, the two goals. Um, and that's why he's so expensive. 10.5 million for a defender is quite expensive, but practically you're play, paying for a midfielder. So he's in my team straight away. I'm regretting, you know, I still I still might change mine before the deadline, you know. I I, I would like him, I just can't afford him right now because I've got expensive. 
Yeah, well, Ruben Diaz is 10.6, and obviously I've, and I've got to stick by my man, and we've got Ruben Diaz there. So um, mm. Trent's been picked by 19.84% mm. of people. Ruben Diaz, 19.92, so it's really close. Um, Ruben Diaz, highest scoring defender last year. He had a mammoth 229 points, 10.6 million. Um, the thing with Ruben Diaz, I think, is, is he's one of the only City players that I'm pretty sure is going to start. Um, yeah. Like, you know, that pet roulette. I think Diaz is a fairly solid bet. Yeah, he definitely is. He's kind of one of those players that just makes an immediate impact. As soon as he's in that team, she, he makes everyone else look better, especially in defence. He did that last season with John Stones. And I think even at parts last season, everyone were arguing whether they were rival fans, City fans, whatever, is he better than Virgil van Dijk? And that just shows how good of a season he had because Virgil van Dijk was incredible before his injury. Um, but yeah, Ruben Diaz, the only reason I haven't gone with Ruben Diaz, I've gone with another City defender, which we'll see later on, is just because I don't know how many goals he scores. I'm always looking for defenders. Yeah. I'm looking for goal-scoring defenders in my team, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And he only got one last season, so uh, and you're only one assist as well, so I can totally see that. I guess he is really relying on the, the clean sheets that City so frequently get. Um, the last two are your guys, so I'll let you talk about them. Yes, yeah, so we start with Harry Maguire. Um, so Harry Maguire, he obviously had a great Euros with England. He's going to get a new partner with Rafa Varane, who will just complement his game so well. I think they'll just both dovetail together. You've got Harry Maguire, who's an incredible defender, very strong, great in the air, but he's not the fastest, whereas Rafa Varane will come in and support him in that game. And I think um, vice versa, I think Maguire will help Varane in that. Um, I think he'll get good stats in terms of clean sheets like they did last season. But Maguire is one of them who starts every game. He, he missed about the last five or six games last season due to injury. But he's there week in, week out. And listening to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer before the season starts, um, he's kind of set Harry Maguire a bit of a task to score more goals with his head from corners. Um, he's already scored one in pre-season. He scored one for England. Um, so I think he'll get more goals. And obviously last season he got two goals and he got one assist. He's not there for assists. But I think the amount of headers he gets on from corners, I think goals will be increased this this week, uh, this season. I just think he's he's there and thereabouts all the time in 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 the penalty area, and he's difficult for defenders to cope with. And I think yeah. let's move on to um, let's move on to his colleague, shall we say, Luke Shaw, who set up a goal for him um, during the preseason. Shaw but oh, Carlos, hope you don't mind me calling. <laughs> Um, and don't say you weren't calling him the same during the during the England games. I just I wasn't. I'm Scottish, Carl. <laughs> oh, are you, are you actually? Oh my God, fair dues. Fair dues. Um, I bet you was calling him a lot worse than Shaw. <laughs> Do you um, know what? I actually quite like you, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw and Rashford are the only ones of your players that I actually quite like. And if yeah. I was pushed into it, either you know, a fit Rashford or a Luke Shaw would be the only ones I'd consider. Yeah. But I'm not there yet. I'm not desperate yet. <laughs> Well, obviously, he scored that goal in the final, but let's not talk about the final any more than we have to. Um, but his assists in the tournament as well with England, and I just think he's going to carry that form into the season, and I think his assists are going to go through the roof. That's why he's been selected by 27% of the players as well. And he's pretty cheap, £9 million. £9 million is not too bad when he's pretty much going to get you some assists. He's in a really good defence. He's going to keep you some clean sheets. He got 10 clean sheets last season. Um, and he started a lot of games. He started 30 games. If he can stay injury-free, he's one for your team, surely, Natalie. I think my only worry about him immediately is, I don't know about United, but with City, the England players only came back this week. And I'm not. Yeah. I'm very much doubtful any of the England players will start for City this weekend. Yeah. Um, has he been playing in your... So you said he'd been playing in your pre-seasons. Are your yeah. England players back? Yeah, he played in the pre-season and he got an assist um, for a Harry Maguire goal against Everton. Um, but there is a few England players that have only just come back late, like Jaden Sancho, for example. I, I don't want to bring him up. I know that must be painful. Um, oh, no, I'll take that 10 or 20 million, whatever it was we got from that. Thanks. <laughs> you have literally got an answer for everything. It's incredible. <laughs> You've seen what I'm going to come at you with. Um, no, for real. Um, but yeah, I know exactly what you mean. That's why it's always strange at the start of a fantasy football season. Yeah. Players you would pick halfway through the season that you're not necessarily going to pick straight away, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, fully. I mean, and to, to be honest with you, I'm saying that, but then I'm looking at my team and I've got something other ways in it. So yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's such, it's such a difficult one to do right now. So that's the, they're the four most picked defenders and the most picked goalkeeper right now. Moving into the midfield, um, and the first one there on our list is Mason Mount, obviously 32 starts last year, six goals, seven assists, six man of the match performances. He was the second highest scoring Chelsea player last season. 9.2 million selected by 21.83 percent of the teams and um, do you rate him i'm one of those percentage i'm one of those percents should i say i am as well <laughs> I, do, I do rate him obviously he had a great years with england despite the outcome as well but he's improving year in year out i watched him at derby under frank lampard and then when frank lampard moves to chelsea he brought him back with him and he got better there he had a bit of a shaky start under Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel didn't initially rate him and people were thinking, oh, is he just Frank Lampard's teacher's pet? But he proved invaluable to Tuchel and he very quickly realised that he should be part of his starting eleven. And He got the assist in the Champions League final for Chelsea against Man City for Kai Havertz. Sorry to remind you of that. But also, he's going to have more attacking power to play with as well. It looks like Lukaku's on his way to Chelsea. If he's not signed already, it's going to happen very, very soon. So he's going to get you more assists than he's already got you last season. Yeah, totally. I, I think Chelsea, are, in terms of the real Premier League, Chelsea are our, our city's biggest rival next year. They, you know, we struggled with them at the end of last season. I can only see Mount getting better and better, which is why I have gone against my England thing and thinking. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the, the next one, and yeah, I'm going to let you talk about him. So what if he scores 270 points or whatever he got last year? I'm not picking him. Bruno Fernandes. Oh, my word. For me, he was a standout player for United for last season, season before. I mean, he had a disappointing Euros with Portugal. So I think the type of player that he is, the type of person that he is, he'll have something to prove, not to anyone else, but to himself. He'll be so annoyed that he didn't really um, start as much as he wanted to at Portugal, uh, for Portugal. Sorry. Um, and what's exciting me is the link up with Sancho. Those two creative players, I really want to see them play together. And they've already started flirting with each other on social media. I don't know if you've already seen it. Sending each other emojis. And I just want to say, I am here for it. I swear. <laughs> I, I am here for it so much. Um, but yeah, Bruno Fernandes, love the guy. Love the guy. And he's been selected by 42.95% of the players. That's the, he's the most selected player there is. And you've not serious chosen question. that, Ali. You've not chosen. I'm, I'm not having it, but serious question for you, Carl. 18 goals last season. We know that eight of them, nine of those, or half of them, came from penalties. We know that they're tightening up on the penalties. So I'm going to say he ain't scoring nine penalties next year, maybe four, maybe five, but surely that's going to have an effect on his points. Um, I think it will. I think maybe they are tightening up on them, but United a lot of the time will get more penalties because we've got types of players like Jaden Sancho, like Marcus Rashford, that will get in the box. And Jaden Sancho, for example, there's probably no one better than him who can beat a man one-on-one. -on -one. And when you're doing that in the box, you're going to get fouled. So I think penalties will always appear at Old Trafford and for Manchester United, as you'll probably vouch for. But um, yes. I won't worry about Bruno Fernandes, Natalie. Don't worry about him. You just worry about Jack Grealish and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Fine, I'm not even going to worry about Jack Grealish. I'm just going to smile every time someone mentions him. And he is the next player there. He's been selected by 36.31% of you. And he has been selected by me again, breaking my England rule. Also, breaking my rule of City players in terms of, I don't know who's going to start. I don't know if he's going to start this weekend. I've got no idea. Going further into the season, I think with City players, you've really got to pay attention to the, the press conferences and pay attention to the amount of games that City have got with the rotation. But... In terms of his stats from last year, he played 24, started 24 times for Villa, six goals, 12 assists, four man of the match performances. So in terms of like a points per game basis, he's really not far off Bruno. 147 yeah. points last season, 9 million. I absolutely, he was, was the first name, I just had to do it. And that's where my, my heart overtakes my head in this game, which is where yeah. my faults always come. Because I was like, well, I've got to have Grealish. I've got to, I don't know if he's going to start this weekend. No, I didn't. Yeah. I had to have him. I think as a United fan, he's. I'm jealous. I'm going to be honest. I'll be open with you, Natalie. Um, I am jealous. He's box office, isn't he? And he will win you so many fouls. He was the most foul player, wasn't he, last season or something like that. Um, and also, he didn't play that much um, at the Euros for England. 
But when he did come on, he made a massive impact. Everyone wanted him to come on. So he might be a little bit fresher. And for me, nine million is cheap. You won't be able to buy one of his cars for nine million. I mean, flipping heck. Uh, nine million, you should get him in his team. I didn't put him in his team, in my team, purely because of the fact, like you said, I don't know who's starting week in, week out for City because Pep just loves to tinker, doesn't he, and change things around. So that's the only reason he's not in my team. I think he's great. Then we move on to the uh, top three picked strikers, and they are also the top three point scorers from last season. And I'm starting to panic a little bit that I haven't chosen any of them. Um, and I'm starting to look at my team thinking, I've still got time to change. Should I make any changes? So have you got, or have you got any of these in of the top three in yours? Uh, I've not, you know, I've not. And, but I'll tell, you for, I'll tell you for why. Let's start off with the first one, shall we? Mohamed Salah, last season's top scorer. He hasn't had a tournament this summer, so he's been rested from that. Um, a reason to choose Salah again, as if you need any more. Um, he's got an easy run of opening fixtures. They're playing Liverpool, are playing Norwich, and you know what Liverpool do with Norwich. I'm sorry, Norwich fans, but you'll remember. And then they've got Burnley. And last season, although Liverpool didn't have a great season, Salah didn't have a great season in terms of how good he could have been. He was still top scorer, so he's always going to score goals. Um, he started 34 games last season, 22 goals, six assists, four man of the matches. He is expensive. He's top dollar, but you're getting a top, top player for that money. Yeah, and that'll be why 42% of people have gone for him. Um, now, a player that I would have picked if, if. I, if Tottenham weren't playing City this weekend, and obviously it is Harry Kane. Mm -hmm. So um, the highest scorer in the game last season with 290 points, 12 million, selected by 28.7% of you all. I don't think he'll play on Sunday. Um, I'm going to wait and carefully listen to Nuno's press conference on Friday before the deadline for transfers. But I don't think he will play. But I definitely think I will transfer him in probably within the first six. Yeah, I think I will as well if I can afford him. I mean, it's just strange. We've been being in this limbo between Spurs and potentially City. Um, like you say, he's not going to play. Um, I would have picked him. If his future was decided one way or the other, I would have picked him. And I think you kind of alluded to it earlier on. I think either City or Chelsea for the league, depending on who gets which striker. If Chelsea sign Lukaku sure. and, Harry Kane get, uh, and City get Harry Kane... I think City are going to look at like a really, really, really strong side, but it just depends if it's going to happen. What, what are your, what's your gut telling you, Natalie? Do you think there's more uh, money in the bank there to get him? I think there's negotiations to be had. I have to say, I'm not in the know. I don't ask on purpose, and I don't. Nobody. I don't. I'd rather like. I'd rather just wait uh, and find out. But my gut feeling is, it, I feel like there's more negotiations to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and I think City will do everything they can, and it, it's all going to come down to Daniel Levy and what he's going to, what he's going to, you know, let him go for. Yeah. But yeah, twenty eight, twenty eight point seven eight percent of you have thought, no, nope, get him straight in there, put that Harry Kane straight in. And then the third one, um, the third highest uh, scorer for the um, strikers last season, Patrick Bamford. Love yeah, this Patrick one. Bamford. Yeah, I think he was. If you watched him last season, I think he was unlucky to miss out on the England call-up, you know. I think in Gareth Southgate's mind, it was between him and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Obviously, he didn't go um, away with England, which is good for Leeds fans because he would have been rested over summer. And he's another one, Natalie, who just starts loads and loads of games. He started 37 games for Leeds last season, 17 goals, 10 assists. And he's relatively cheap, 9.5 million compared to the two we've previously just said. Um, he's still not in my fantasy team, to be honest. But that's just because he's too expensive for me again, I think. Yeah, and what do you think about the fact that obviously Leeds playing United this weekend? Do you think he's got um, a chance of scoring? Or are you just going to say, no, Harry Maguire is too good? Shall I tell you what? I don't think he has. I'm going to be honest. I think Leeds have more chance of scoring from other areas than Patrick Bamford. I think Patrick Bamford sacrifices a lot of um, his own game for the team's... Um, benefit, if that makes sense. Marcel, uh, Marcelo Bielsa loves those type of players who will sacrifice themselves for the good of the, their team. And he is one of those. I think he could have got a lot more goals um, 
if he's a little bit more selfish, but he's a team player. And I think uh, Leeds United, and uh, Manchester United and Leeds is going to be a great game, but whether Patrick Bamford will score, I'm not sure. And I'm hoping not, I'm going to be honest. Of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, that is the 11 most picked players in the game uh, before the season starts. Now, we're going to show you our teams. I have to admit, I'm, I've, I've been saying it, I'm not definitely set on mine. I can't guarantee this will be the 11 that I have when, when the cut-off is, is gone. Um, do you want to go first, Carl? Um, yeah, I can go first. Let me go first, right. I've just got my <laughs> team down here. Um, I'm so, so that's, why I'm, that's why I'm reading. So, in, in goalkeeper, in goalkeeper, I've gone Schmeichel, Peter Schmeichel. I did have Martinez. Peter Schmeichel. Yeah, uh, um, no, I wish. Um, Kasper Schmeichel. Um, I went with Emmy Martinez at first, but Schmeichel is 0.1 million pound cheaper, and I was really um, tightening the budget this year. You know, oh, it is. Yeah. Did it get down to that? Wow. And then I've got back three Alexander Arnold because I'm I'm just choosing the best players here. I want to win. I've got Alexander Arnold. He will score you points, as we said earlier. I've got Luke Shaw. Again, who will score your points? And I've got from City, Cancelo, because I think he's more of an attacking threat as well. And I said that before to you, Natalie, earlier on, that I want a defender who can also get you goals and get you assists. In midfield, you'll likely course, start. You'll likely course, start this weekend. Yeah. We'll start. And like you said before, City have got a great defence. So I wanted a bit of that, I'm going to be honest. Um, let's go to midfield, shall we? I'll do it quick. Mason Mount. Um, as we said before, for those reasons, Bruno Fernandes, because anyone who not, who's not got him, I don't know, you might as well not play fantasy football this season. <laughs> um, and I've got St. Maximan as well. Um, the, these next two, St. Maximan and João Martinho, I've got them because they were cheap, but they're also creative players and they're their standout players for their team, in my opinion. I think Maximan um, gets you goals, gets you assists. I know Newcastle don't score loads of goals, but if they do, everything will come through him. And then up front, I have got um, Tony from Brentford because he was cheap enough. And I think, to be honest, not just because he was cheap enough, because I think he'll score your goals. I honestly do. Um, I've also got Danny Ings, and I'll talk about him a little bit later on. And I've got Jamie Vardy because you can't have a party without Jamie Vardy, can you? I mean, he's always going to score your goals, and he always plays. He's quite expensive, but he's a cheaper option than your Harry Kane's and your Mel Salas. So that is my team, Natalie. Nice, decent. Right, I'll I'll tell you mine, and then we'll do, do our ones to watch. And um, I should say as well, I'm still I've got point seven in the bank still, which is why I'm still like, ah, like I'm a, I'm a set on this. Seven. I, I was seven. doing well with point one. Point yeah, seven. Yeah, I've got point oh, seven way. in the bank. Oh, Get it, just spent. Not Get it spent, you can't take it with you. Get it spent. <laughs> well, in goal, I have got Martinez. Um, Martinez, I just thought, it, I just, you know, for the sake of point one when I had it, I just thought he was the, the absolute safest bet. Um, and then I've got in defence Ruben Diaz, um, who I said before. Then I've got Chilwell um, and Veltman. Now, I I really like Chilwell and similar to sort of reasons um, to you as well. In terms of development, he was cheap. He was 7.2. And I, I always think of Brighton as a really solid team, you know, like in terms of defensively, like they don't score much, but they don't let in much as well. So I thought that he was um, fairly, for, for 7.2, a fairly um, decent option. And then moving into midfield, I've gone Grealish, obviously, Mount, who I mentioned. Um, Dallas from Leeds, again, at 7.5. He had a mammoth 206 points last year. Um, and I think Leeds are going to get better this year. Leeds are definitely going to be one of those teams that benefits from the home crowd being back. So uh, for 7.5, I thought he was a steal. And then I've also gone for Ilke Gundogan because um, he's incredible, because I love him. He scores goals, he gets assists. He is likely to play um, for the, in the first couple of games for sure, if I'm sort of looking at the first sort of six fixtures. And then up front, I've got Mane, Son, um, and I've also got Tony um, from, from Brentford as well. I watched him, I, I, I did a little bit of work on the championship last year and I watched him a lot for Brentford and I just, you know, really like him and his story and you mm. know, that'll be giving away who my one to watch is in a minute. But that's my team right now, Carl, but I'm just... And do you know what? I can see, I'm doing it already. I'm getting overly nervous. I'm overthinking it. Like, yeah. And someone needs to have a word with me and the season's not started. 
I was confident in my team until I saw yours. And then I was like, oh, no, like there's players that I've missed out, like Gundogan and, um, and Son. I would have loved to have Son, especially with the whole Kane situation. Son's going to be their, their um, attacking spear point, aren't they? So right. and maybe I've missed out one or two as well. So you're not the only one that I live. We're all having second thoughts, third thoughts, fourth. <laughs> it's brilliant because it's part of the reason why I love it so much. This is just stress. Like, this right? is so much stress. We're supposed right? to be already. Oh. Right. Oh my word. <laughs> right. We've given away little hints there about our ones to watch. Who is your one to watch for game week one? So my one to watch for game week one um, is a bit of a surprise, and he was a surprise with what's happened to him over this transfer window. I've gone with Danny Ings. Um, the Villa move for me just came out of nowhere. I think everyone was focusing on Jack Grealish's move to City. And I think it was just before that was completed, Villa announced, oh yeah, we've just signed Danny Ings. And I was like, oh my word, I did it. No offence to Villa, but I expected Danny Ings to be one of those strikers who would go to a top four club if they couldn't get a Kane or a Lukaku. Even if you could go to City, if City didn't end up getting Kane, they might go for Ings because... He is a quality finisher. He will get you goals. Um, and for Aston Villa to get him, I just think that's great. I think that's great business. Um, and Villa have done well in attacking areas already. They're going to 100% confirm Leon Bailey from Bayern Leverkusen. And I think if Villa spend the rest of the Grealish money well, and they'll probably spend it in those attacking areas, it's just going to create more and more chances for Danny Ings. So my one to watch for week one is Danny Ings. You watch this space. He's scoring at least... He'll, he'll definitely score this week, and I just think he'll go up and go up and go up as the season goes on. Who are Villa? I'm just looking. Who are Villa playing this weekend? Villa hmm. are playing. Yeah, they yeah, are. Look as well. Watford. Oh, yeah, great shot. So they've got Watford, Newcastle, Brentford. That's a great first three games for him. Yeah, he's looking to get this on the score sheet for that, isn't he? Watford, yeah. first game away. And I know they've got Ollie Watkins. That was the only thing in my head. I was thinking, oh, Danny Ings and will he play Ollie Watkins? And I just don't know what formation um, they're going to go with. But I'm pretty sure he's going to get games. They're not going to sign a big player yeah. from Southampton and he's not going to play him. So who's yours, Natalie? Who have you gone with? Well, I, mean, I think they'll play Ings and Watkins. I think they'll play both of them. And I actually um, had Ings and then I needed some money yeah. So I traded him out for Tony because yeah. Ings is 9.1 and Tony 7.9. So that's where I'd save myself some money. But Ings is a great shout. I think that's a really great one to watch. And my one to watch is Ivan Tony. Yeah. Like I said, I did a little bit of work on the championship last year. Um, and obviously everybody knows he was absolutely phenomenal in the championship. Um, I love his story. You know, he, he, he turned down numerous Premier League clubs to, to go to Brentford because he wanted to play football. And he broke all the records, broke all the modern league records last year, 31 goals, 10 assists. Um, you know, he, he was crucial in the playoffs. He, you know, he scores penalties. So I think it's 7.9. I think, yeah, I think it's a bargain. Obviously it's a risk because he's new to the league. They're new to the league. It's definitely a risk, but I think at that value, um, I think it's worth it. I think the fact that, like you say, so many Premier League clubs have been in for him over the past few seasons and he hasn't gone, um, is just kind of a statement to everyone that he wants to play and he's there to put in the work and score the goals. And I think every now and again, every season, there's a standout player. And he, I think he could be the standout player that he'll have one season at Brentford and if he does well, someone will take him. Do you know what I mean? And they'll see that he yeah. can do it in the Premier League. And I reckon he can. I honestly do. I think that's a great shout, Natalie. And you've got him in your team as well, haven't you? So you're have. also I shouting have. out to yourself, yeah. Great minds. We have done so <laughs> well. Well done, us. <laughs> right, well, that is it. That is the first episode. Thank you for watching the Tactics Board. How are you feeling after our first chat, Carl? Are you confident? Do you think you're going to... What's, what's more chance? United finishing above City or you finishing above me? I think both will happen. I'm going to be honest. I think both will happen. I think it's more likely that I will finish above you. I want to start the rivalry nice and early, Natalie, because it will make me turn up week in, week out. So my biggest threat to myself is me just not doing it, missing out one week. Uh, yeah. I don't know about you, Natalie. What do you think? Do you think you'll my, be... I don't know. My biggest threat is the, the, the obsession getting too much and I overthink and I'll tinker too much. And yeah, yeah. I'll move, like, I'll move someone out and then they'll have a great game and then I'll just be devastated. So, yeah, I don't know. I reckon let's, let's revisit this challenge like maybe three or four games in and... We'll go from there. more of an idea. 
Uh, but thank you and thank you everybody as you say episode one of the tactics board make sure you join the footy community on sky sports fantasy football the code's on the screen 997-6717 see if you can finish above carl and i which is is sounds highly likely with the way the two of us are going right now but best of luck with your picks for the weekend